I haven't done any of my self-help promotion type video things. When I say promotion, not promoting or selling a book here. Um, but I'll go through some of this stuff because, you know, it's how I sort of push things forward. At the moment, as you know, things are a bit up and down here in Spain. But that's normal when you're hitting the ground in a new country. Now, the first thing is coping. Coping with these types of environments involve understanding what a what you've got available b how you're going to get through things and see how you're going to push it forward so the first thing is sustainability what have you got is it working have you got a job already set up have you got some finance that is going to keep you stable that is your first port of call you need to get your finances going because um, once you get that ticking over the rest gets a bit easier next thing is your family life if you're with a wife kids whatever you need to make sure that you're keeping that in line with your goals and where you want to go in life um, because if you don't you could end up with an unhappy marriage or just as bad or worse um, your your family life starts affecting your business life and your business life starts affecting your family life so you end up with a complete deterioration of everything so it is sitting there working out where you're going to go when i used to do exhibition work it's a bit like when i do the surveying i go away for stints i'll do three or four months solid so when i come back i'll actually stop and do nothing for about a month two months whatever um because a i've got money in the bank because i've stockpiled it but b I've also sort of making up for lost time from being away from the home, etc. Next thing is adapting. Adapting to the environment. Here I am in Spain. I'm finding that the work ratio here isn't fantastic, but my skill set has some uses here, but it's going to be more of a global use than a local use. The average person here must be about 55, 60, if not older. Um, so as such, a lot of the skills that I have are of very little use locally. But what I do have is the ability to develop websites for specific things like real estate, um, maintenance services, um, helping expats do whatever they need to do. So my skills here locally for this specific area will be related to websites it has to be um, the facilities management stuff I can do but I would actually need somebody that's an actual developer rather than a um, expat as such um, purely because of the scale I like to work at um, and I could start with a one man and van scenario um, but it would take me a, probably two years to actually build up to where I wanted to go so how do I adapt that? Well, the fact is, I already have people that do these things already. I have a friend of ours that does landscape gardening and swimming pools. I've got another friend that does air conditioning. Well, my cousin does air conditioning. Um, I've got a guy that does construction. I've got a guy that will do general maintenance. So I've already got a pool of guys that I can find work for. So from a facilities management base, I can adapt the system. I can't go out there and be one man in a van. It's just not something I want to be doing. Uh, but I do have five men in five vans, which I can utilize and help develop their business at the same time developing my own along the way. So that's one thing I'm looking at, adapting to the local environment. Like I said, doing the websites, another thing, the call center stuff I'm still developing, although at the moment it's deciding whether I'm better off doing software um, because there's a lot of money in the actual software side for this type of business. For example, high-speed dialers, uh, predictive dialers, auto dialers, and dialers that speak when you press buttons instead of actually vocally speaking. All that stuff has money in it, which may actually make more money than the actual call center itself. Um, and the funny thing is I already have that technical skill and ability because I've done it before. Um, we were doing all that stuff in the Philippines. I was actually um, developing the audio typing with the buttons and stuff just before Typhoon Haiyan hit. So I could roll back and start developing that. I could also look at VoIP, the voice over IP credits, because there's a whole industry there. Uh, one of my former business partners uh, out of New York he has now moved into that full time. So there's opportunity to develop that because they won't be developing this far uh, 
in Europe because the American market normally focuses on the American market. So there's opportunities there. So it's adapting to what environment you've got and what opportunities are there in front of you. Also talking with Peter, Peter's interested in doing uh, language schools. I'm interested in that because me swapping to teaching English, I could drop everything else and just become a teacher. Um, and then I'll be quite happy to doing that, to be honest, because like I, said, I don't do stuff for money. I do stuff to be sustainable, which is very different um, because if I was doing it for money, I wouldn't be sat here. I would already be a millionaire by now. Um, a lot of the stuff I've done in the past, I've dropped jobs in very big companies purely because I don't like the company. Um, a, the company, the way it works, but B, the company within the company. You know, I don't, I, I, I'm too ethical for my own good. I think that's the best description. Anyway, next thing, persevere. Perseverance is the key to all of this. If you do not persevere, you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, I'm sat here with 101 things that I can do and what am I going to do? The first thing is I need to concentrate on the English stuff, teaching the English, um, because I can start making money off that tomorrow. Um, I might actually put an ebook together on teaching English as a second language um, because it's a lot more simple than people realize. Because, like most teaching today, it's not actually done outside of a um, natural talent, it's done inside a book. So, you, you know, it's modular, which is, makes it far, far more simple to do. Um, but the advantage with that is the income off teaching English can be as much as one and a half thousand euros a month which doesn't sound a lot to you and me but that's enough to stay in Spain a thousand euros is enough for us to stay in Spain but I also still earn my money out of the Philippines and other bits and pieces so it would actually take me into sustainability which is why I'm looking at it that's why I say persevere the robotic stuff, I'm really keen on the Raspberry Pi because that's what I love. You know, I've talked before about doing stuff that will make you money and then stuff that may not make money take, treat as a hobby. This is exactly that. The Raspberry Pi, I know I'll absorb too much of my time. So as such, it's a hobby. Um, it will make money, I'll tell you that now, but it will take me probably three years to get where I want it to be. Um, there's a lot of stuff I already know I can automate, but I need to understand the other bits of software it will be connecting to. For example, if you take a BMS module on a piece of plant equipment in a large facility, that module can be like 200 to 400 pounds. The Raspberry Pi is already smarter than it. No joke. So for 25, 30 quid, I can build a better, faster, more reliable piece of equipment. And the only thing the rest of that network is looking for is A, it's compatible, but B, the IP. The rest of it is it's just computer knowledge. So the fact is I could actually make some of this stuff obsolete and actually upset some of the FM companies at the same time by offering a service that's far cheaper than everybody else's. Um, that's something to come to. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, which is why I'm saying, Matt, put that to one side, get, get the English box out, start teaching English, and then you can put the box that has got your robotic stuff in there. Um, you can start doing that after Christmas because I want to teach Ubi how to program his first computer game. Um, may seem a bit, you know, an anti computer game in some ways. Not, not. No, the, the, the reason I'm anti-computer game is I was a very good computer gamer. Um, not boasting, but I would play a game until I finished it. And, you know, like Tour, Tour of Duty, for example, um, I'd finish it in about four hours, whichever version it is. It's The problem I have is I, I push through. That's the problem. Perseverance on that. I will complete the game. And I'll stay there till it's complete. I'll be there at three in the morning till it's finished. So I don't play games anymore because <laughs> I know that's one of my bad habits. Um, computer games, it's not the computer game itself. It's just the fact is I need to complete things. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I walk into a room, I've got to finish it. Um, so persevere, but not with computer games. Push them to one side. They're not helping you. Maybe I should do another video on computer games. Anyway, next thing is fight. 
nobody's going to help you except somebody like myself and a few of you guys that are actually on this channel. Um, outside of that, you're probably going to have very limited support from anybody else. Um, I've had it before where people have assumed, oh, you can't do that because... And it will be, oh, well, you haven't, you're you not qualified to do that, and you're not trained, and you're not... And I'm like, okay, what is it? Well, he's got... And, it, and I look at something, like, like for example, schematic diagrams for, um, for well, it would be three-phase systems for the Ministry of Defence, for example, in some of their buildings. I look at the schematics and I can understand them. A lot of the electricians couldn't because I don't know why they don't. They should do, but maybe they haven't done it for like 20 years. But their their assumption is well we're trained on high voltage etc etc your your electronics engineer you do yeah mumble mumble um, but when you go well the reason that's not working is because that's not working there's a relay that's not obviously not connecting through there blah 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 which isn't bringing this in and that's kind of, and they look at it and they may not even understand it once you've actually explained it to them. Now, that's why I say you just fight for whatever. You, you don't have to always be right either. I mean, it's, I'm quite happy to take things on the chin when I get it wrong. But the fact is, I don't just sit in the sidelines and go, okay, it's somebody else's problem. Every problem's our problem. Because going back to persevering with things, if you can understand things better than everybody else, it puts you above everybody else. And it may not be relevant to your boss, may not be relevant to the company you're with, may not be relevant to um, the industry you're in even. It's relevant to you. As a person, that knowledge is something you've got that nobody else has. That knowledge is something you can replicate or use in something else. This is why I look at the robotics. Now, I look at that Raspberry Pi and I'm thinking, okay, I can do robotics. I can build plotters. I can build small um, programmable robots. I can use it for taking temperature readings and uh, humidity and things inside air conditioner units and things like that, air handler units, for things like art galleries and things where they cost a lot of money to have the equipment that does it currently. And on top of that, this is all swappable. You could actually have a failing unit and you could swap it out with this because we will understand it to a level where the other equipment may not want you to talk to it because big companies like to own everything. Um, but you could turn around and go, well, I don't care because whatever yours wants this to say, we'll make it say it so it thinks it's your part of equipment. Because um, I can't see why we should spend £500 on some obsolete equipment that you've got a patent on. Um now, it may sound, I might maybe pushing it a bit with going into other people's territories by swapping out some obsolete bits of kit with something that will do it because they've got a patent on that system. At the same time, we could actually replace the entire system on a budget that would cost less than probably a quarter of the entire system that the other companies quoted. There is lots of stuff here. You've got to fight and push yourself forward. You'll get knockbacks, you'll get pushed down, but the thing is, if you stop fighting to push yourself forward, nobody's going to help you. Nobody will take you the extra mile. They may actually turn around and say, oh, so I told you so, you wasted time, no point doing it. But when you do succeed, those same people will actually say, oh yeah, that, that, I helped him with that. I remember John when he used to work down the factory and now he's um, successful, blah, blah. Yeah, they won't mention that they never helped you along the way. So, bear in mind, a lot of time you'll feel you're on your own because you are. Bear in mind that people do not see your company or whatever you're doing as important as the way you do. It's your baby. So, when people let you down, be prepared for them to let you down. If they actually go above your expectations, then that's a good thing. But if somebody doesn't turn up on a Friday morning and you have to get a presentation ready for Saturday morning and you've got a 12-hour drive plus putting it all up together on your own, etc., and have to work through the night, then you do it. You make it happen. 
because that's what fighting for your business means. That's what progress is. That's what makes you push your life forward. Rely on nobody. Rely on yourself. You're the only person that will make this happen. And I hope that you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.